Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. We are back. So, if you don't know this series, we talk about all things Assassin's Creed. It could be from a topic, a theory I have, discussing current events in the Assassin's Creed universe going on, or kind of doing an overview of something of lore or knowledge that you may or may not know in Assassin's Creed. And also, spoiler alert, in this series for everything possible really in Assassin's Creed, there's potential for full spoilers for every game. So you've been warned. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today we are going to be talking about the first civilization, or the Isu, as we know they are known. We're going to be going through their history, what we know about them so far, their effect on the world and lore of Assassin's Creed, as well as what effect they've actually had, more importantly and more specifically, in the major Assassin's Creed titles. So we know now from Assassin's Creed Syndicate, they're actually called the Isu. That's like their race, whereas you'd call us um, Homo sapiens or humans, they're the Isu. They're also known as the first civilization or simply as those who came before. It's actually like unclear of their evolutionary origins. We have some ideas of how they created us. Supposedly they genetically altered apes of some kind and their DNA to be similar to their own to then create humans which are kind of just hybrids in the end of what they are. We were made to be durable and pretty much just be mindless slaves to their pieces of Eden. We were not intended to be wise as Juno, the first civilization member herself, once says. We did not build them to be wise and now they are our final vaulted hope. You are they. But it wasn't until there was interbreeding, of course, where hybrids of the first civilization and humans were created, which, as we know from the last episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth, Adam and Eve were two of those people who rebelled against the Isu and started a massive rebellion and war that broke out that lasted over 10 years between the two races until the world ended in the Toba catastrophe. Now, both races survived this catastrophe. Very small dwindling numbers of the Isu, where there were still a few thousand humans remaining from the billions that did die at the Toba catastrophe. Now, eventually, the Isu did die out, but the humans still look to them as gods, and in stories have been passed down, we still know them today as different gods from Greek gods and pagan gods and things like that. And even before, we were never able to fully comprehend who they were or where they came from when they had us enslaved or even beyond that after the Toba catastrophe. Now the thing about the first civilization that we know the most is three specific figures, Minerva, Jupiter and Juno. Now they are the Capitoline Triad. They worked together to prevent the catastrophe in the first place. They built vaults to test methods of salvation. And we actually see the different methods of salvation. Juno walks us through all of them in Assassin's Creed 3 every time we get a new battery that powers the temple. Now we see how they tested it, how it worked, and how it failed to save the world before. We know that these vaults were built all throughout the world and scattered, with pieces of Eden hidden in amongst lots of them. We see them in almost every Assassin's Creed game, right from the beginning of Assassin's Creed 1. We have Solomon's Temple, and we see a piece of Eden in it, and then we see vaults at the end of Assassin's Creed 2, and it continues so on and so forth from there. Now we see more of this triad starting with Minerva, who used an artifact called the Eye which gave her the ability to transfer messages to the future. They're almost interactive messages. That way she's actually able to see the person and say names and communicate and she knows who she's talking to. It doesn't mean she can change the future. It just means she can foresee events in which she is placed by the action she's done herself. And in some ways it does help her come up with some ideas of what to do and how to potentially save the world itself. She doesn't know what's going to happen, but at least gives her the chance to do the best she can to help save the world. Now the thing about this triad, capital on triad, of Juno, Minerva and Jupiter, is Juno never really wanted to save the world. She sought to control it. Juno betrayed them, planning to allow the catastrophe to happen so she could live and rule the world left behind. 
Minerva stopped her and she trapped her inside the Grand Temple. However, Juno was actually able to kind of, in a way, hack the eye because she's a sneaky bitch, as I've said before. And if the eye was ever activated to save the world, Juno would then return. Now, this eye didn't just send messages forward. Minerva was actually able to establish the eye as a device that would manipulate the underlying calculations of existence. I don't really know exactly what that means. That's pretty much just super uber wizard god magic. That's essentially what I gather from that translation from Minerva and the Assassin's Creed database, which is essentially how Desmond saved the world in 2012 in Assassin's Creed 3. This eye was able to unlock and protect the world from the sun's rays and manipulate what's going on in our existence, essentially. Now, the thing about this in the first place is Minerva destroyed the eye, so Juno could not escape and was still locked away in the Grand Temple. Minerva allowed the catastrophe to happen, but built a second eye just to commune to the future in hopes to help save the world from it happening again. That's how she communicated to Ezio, that's how she communicated to Desmond and all these other figures so she could see what happened in the end of time. However, Juno did the same thing in vaults, also communing with the future in hopes that she would eventually be unlocked from the Grand Temple itself. Juno was able to repair the eye in her imprisonment, hoping one day she'd be free. It only took a hundred years for the first vaults to be built by the Capitoline Triad, and a hundred years after that, more or less the Isu were completely extinct. It was a very, almost quick series of events that happened on a hundred years. It sounds like quite a lot, but I mean, from all the shit that went down, that's a, not much time to be able to come up with a way to save the world from a sun solar flare ray. So this Capitoline Triad affected the Assassin's Creed Desmond Saga's games. So essentially these messages left behind by all of these members of the Triad led Desmond through Altair's memories through Ezio's memories, through Connor's memories, sending him messages of how to unlock the secrets he needed to eventually lead him to the Grand Temple, and in the end his destiny, which gave him the choice at the end of Assassin's Creed 3, which Minerva said to let the catastrophe happen, so that Juno would still be imprisoned, or use the eye, and alter and manipulate the underlying calculations of existence, save the world and let Juno out. Desmond said it was better to let the world live and come up with a way to destroy Juno later than it would be to let it happen again. So he sided with Juno, used the eye, he sacrificed himself, saved the world as we know in 2012. Totally in real life and everything. We continue on, but Juno is now free. Looking for a way out, looking for a way to control the world. So that's how the first civilization has affected these games, and that's how this triad has affected the Assassin's Creed universe, the universe as a whole, and all these events that have happened throughout the series. It is done. The world is saved. You played your part well, Desmond. But now, now it's time that I played mine. I hope you learned something new about the first civilization today, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm sure in future episodes we will be looking at Juno further, what she plans in the future, and as I've talked about before, there's even ways that possibly she could be stopped. So thanks again for watching this episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.